Hey people, time to tackle something else today. Um, I want to show you how you can get nice quality extruded text and in particular how you can deform it and still have it look decent. Now the typical issue you'll have with it is you'll get your text spline or logo imported from Illustrator. You'll take an extrude and you place your text spline inside the extrude so it gets extruded out. Lovely. Uh, I'm just going to quickly throw a little white material on there just so it looks a bit nicer. Now, the issue comes if you want to do anything with this text. If I take, for example, a twist deformer, I'm just going to turn it around 90 degrees because by default it twists from the bottom to the top like a, like a corkscrew, I guess. I want it to go from left to right, from the T to the other T. So I'm going to spin it around 90 degrees scale it up so it covers the whole of the text and make sure it's just sitting in the middle okay so here's my text uh, I'm just going to group the whole lot together if you're ever confused about the hierarchy on where the former should go you know what a nice easy solution is just group everything so group this up and what I'll do is I'll turn up the twist because I want to spin and spiral this text around now the problem you're going to get is stuff like this. This horrible, mangled, distorted letter T here. It's a question of subdivisions. If I show you the wireframe for this, this is the wireframe. I'll just disable the uh, deformer for a moment. My letter T doesn't really have many polygons on it. One on the top, one on the front, one on the back, a couple down the side. And the problem is, these will get mangled. I'll reset that and turn on the twist. As this gets twisted, those polygons are just going to overlap. They'll collapse in on themselves, they'll get thin, they'll distort, and you end up with a mess. So if you want to blow up your text into small fragments, or bend it, or twist it, the default settings just won't do very much useful for you. So, let's turn this off. Reset it rather. I'll show you how you add the division on here. Now you may notice that letter E, this looks perfectly fine. This has lots of divisions on there, but the letter T doesn't. This is Cinema trying to be clever. If I go to my text spline, so in your case it might be just a spline logo, it depends where you're getting it from. Uh, take a look down at the bottom. Down at the bottom of any spline object, you will find there's a setting called Intermediate Points. This determines how finely the edges get divided up. And currently we have Adaptive Mode, where Cinema puts in a new division every 5 degrees round a curve. Now because our letter T doesn't have any curvature, it gets no divisions. Um, there's a few modes, Uniform, uh, Adaptive, Natural, these will all give you different divisions based on the position of the planets. Um, I find the most predictable one is definitely subdivided. Uh, this was added about version 12, I think. So if you're on an old version, you have to go get a new, go get an update. Um, but basically, subdivided gives you two settings. It keeps the angle setting. So if you have lots of nice intricate detail, you will get lots and lots of polygons around there need as they're needed to uh, display the object but you also get a maximum length maximum length does exactly what it says you will have a new division in this case every five centimeters now what number you use depends on how big your text is so just turn this up or down to taste um, just to show what it does six seven eight nine ten the bigger the number gets the bigger the gap will be so I'm just going to set this down to every three centimeters, which gives me quite a nice dense grid on the side. But you may notice the front surface here isn't divided. And in fact, there's no divisions going from the front to the back. So if our extruded text were a bit thicker, there's no divisions running horizontally across here. So we might still have some deformation issues across that part of the object too. Um, it's a, it's a quirk of how cinema's made, but you will change each of these directions in different places. 
So around the outside edge, change it on the text object. Um, for the front to back divisions, that is on the extrusion itself, because this is what really adds a depth. So that's where the setting sort of has to be. And you'll find that simply called subdivision. Nice and easy to find. Uh, just turn this up again. Now, keep in mind, this is a set number. Whereas the spline object asked me how much distance there is between them, the extrude version says literally how many divisions should there be. So increase this one to set it. But we're still left without anything on the front face. These front faces, the technical term we use for these are caps. This is how the object is capped off on either side. So go to your caps settings. This is all on the extrude nerves. And right at the bottom we have type. What type of caps? What formation should they be? Now, broadly speaking, we have triangles with three sides, quadrangles with four sides, and anything with more than four, four sides is just referred to as an N gone. The N becomes a number. So technically, this front of my letter T, it has one, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, eight sides on it. Um, so it's an end gone. If I change this to triangles, you'll see all the triangles there. Bit messy, not very nice. They won't distort very cleanly either. Uh, but to be honest, neither will the quadrangles. What we really need is to have this nice even grid running across the surface of the object. And that is cunningly titled regular grid. Turn it on. Don't really see much happening. Uh, that's mostly because the size here is quite large. We only get a new division every 10 centimeters. And if you remember, I set the one on my on my text spline to every three. So ideally match these numbers. Turn that down to three. And we'll get the grid. Now it won't match up perfectly. Almost nothing you can do will make these things match up perfectly, but it'll be pretty close. So when I go to distort my text, get my twist, turn up the uh, twist setting, the angle, and as it goes round, you can see there's no more overlapping, there's no more mangled surfaces. This text is, it's distorting and twisting and spiraling quite nice and smoothly. So if you ever need to use any of these deformers with an extruded object, change your subdivision in three places on the text intermediate points, on the extrude subdivision setting, and also with the caps, with the, uh, let's see what they refer to it, the regular grid on your extrude nerves object. But that way you'll get a nice even grid and this will distort much more cleanly. I'll just quickly hit render on this. Nice clean edges, all looks pretty good. So uh, yeah, do, 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 do keep this in mind when you're deforming your objects. Make sure they have a nice even number of subdivisions.